Hello everyone, I'm Brian with Obedia and PC Audio Labs, and in today's video I'm going to be giving you an overview of how to set up your audio interface in Presonus Studio One. Now, let's just dive in. We're going to be talking about how to set up your audio interface in Studio One. When I open Studio One, I get the start page and it gives me multiple options for creating new songs, looking at my recent files, my artist profile, news feed, demos and tutorials, and etc. Most importantly, down here I see the option for setup and I see a little icon that showcases my audio interface. If I click on that, I'll be presented with the options dialog box and the audio setup tab. In this dialog box, I will see a pull down for audio device. If I click on that, I'm going to see all of the audio interfaces that I have installed on my computer. Now here I can just simply click to select the audio interface that I would like to use with Studio One. Once I've done that, as long as my audio interface is set up and drivers installed and etc., I'm good to move on to the next part of this process, which will be setting up my audio inputs and outputs. However, I may want to open the control panel for my audio interface. If I do that, I'll see the control panel for my audio interface, and in this case I've got universal control. Now universal control or the control panel for your audio interface is where you can make changes to some of the important factors for recording, such as your sample rate, clock source, block size, and uh, other settings, all of which will govern how you're recording inside of Studio One. Now you might be wondering what some of these uh, factors are going to have to do with recording in Studio One. Now the sample rate has to do with how many times per second I will be sampling or taking snapshots of audio that comes into my audio interface and gets recorded by Studio One. So a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz is CD quality and some audio interfaces can go higher than that. They can go all the way up to 192 kilohertz. My Studio 192 can do that and your results may vary just depending on the quality of audio you may want to record. The block size is another uh, very important factor when we're talking about recording digital audio. The block size is very simply to do with how quickly we are going to require that audio that's processed by the audio interface be turned back around so that we can hear it. And this is very important for live monitoring situations such as recording your voice, recording a guitar, anything that you need to play record through a microphone, and then here come back to your headphones very quickly. There are different options in Studio One for being able to make use of very low latency and zero latency settings, and so you may want to play around with this a little bit depending on your audio interface. A good rule of thumb is to achieve the lowest possible block size that you can get when you're in the process of recording, and then when you go back into the process of mixing your audio, you can usually bring your block size up. And the reason for that is that a lower block size means that your computer, your audio workstation, your audio interface are all going to have, have to work harder in order to turn that audio signal back around from analog to digital, digital to analog. So you just want to keep that in mind. Play around with your settings. Your mileage may vary. And if you need help with that, again, just give us a call at Obedia and we can help you to set it up. Once you've set these options for your audio interface in Studio One, you can now jump back in and take a look at the rest of your settings uh, to ensure that now you have your device block size and sample, right, uh, sample rate set properly. Take a look at your input and output latencies, which will tell you how much latency you may be incurring while recording or playing back audio. Now we haven't yet set up our audio inputs and outputs for our audio interface in Studio One. We're gonna step up and do that next, and I'll show that to you in just a moment. Now, in order to begin setting up the audio inputs and outputs in Studio One, I need to create a new song. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create New Song, and I'm just going to kind of disregard the initial setup of the song right now. I don't need to do any spe uh, special settings because I just need to set up my audio inputs and outputs. I'll hit OK on the Create New Song dialog box. And now in my new song that I've just created, I'm going to go ahead and open up the settings for this song. When I open the settings, I'll have the option to start setting up my audio inputs and outputs. So I'm going to click on Studio One and then navigate to Options. And now I'll see the Audio Device Setup box, which I was previously looking at. But now I'm going to notice that there's a new button labeled Song Setup. I'm going to click on Song Setup. When I click on Song Setup, I'm presented with the General Settings tab for this song. This is where I can see its sample rate and other information. The meta information for the song which is where my artist information and other information is attached to the song, and most importantly, the audio I.O. or input-output setup. Now here in the audio I.O. setup, I see my Studio 192 on the top left-hand corner, and then I have a routing matrix. Now the routing matrix on the top row is going to list the hardware inputs from my audio interface. And these are all of the hardware inputs that are available, and your interface is going to differ, of course. 
and on the left hand column I will see the software inputs as these software inputs will correspond with the hardware inputs from my audio interface. So for instance I have an input left and right and an input left and an input right uh, set up inside of Studio One. But I am going to make a few changes here because my input left and right, while useful, I'm probably not going to be making use of a stereo input into my audio interface, but I can see that when I move the LR icons uh, around in the routing matrix here, they move around together. That's because that's a stereo input pair, and I can move those around. Wherever I move those, they will be routed to the hardware input that is listed on the top row, and this will be the same for my next inputs as I follow down. Now again, I want to go ahead and change this setup just a little bit because I'm not really going to use that stereo input, so I'm going to go ahead and click it and then click on remove. Now I'd also like to name my inputs a, a little better to match up with the inputs on my audio interface. I don't really use an input left and right. I'm going to click on the input L, double click on it, and I'm going to change its name and I'm going to call it input 1. And that's because that's the first input on my audio interface. And then I'll jump down, I can hit tab on my keyboard, and rename the next input as input 2. So now I've got my two inputs, they're named input 1 and input 2, and they are hard-coded to talk to mic input 1 and mic input 2 on my audio interface. So if those were the only inputs that I need, then I could just move on and I could uh, get into the process of setting up my other inputs, outputs, and recording. But I have a lot of other inputs on this audio interface. I've got eight analog ins, so I want to go ahead and make use of these other analog inputs on my audio. So I'm going to and so in order to do that, I'm going to click on the Add Mono button, and I'll click this six times to add six new mono inputs. Now Studio One is real smart, and it's going to name my inputs accordingly, uh, flowing down from what my previous input was named. So it was named input two, so now I've got input three, four, five, six, uh, seven, all the way up to input number eight. And then I can see that it also auto routes my inputs to the hardware inputs for my audio interface. So input three is hard coded to uh, input number three on my audio interface, input four to four, and et cetera, moving all the way down. And I can see that from the small M icons denoting mono inputs for each of those inputs from the hardware and into the software. So this is great because it basically saves me a lot of time. I can put my mouse over one of those M icons. I can see directly to which input that software input is chained. And now everything is set up. My inputs are ready to go. I'm going to click on Apply. And now these inputs all become active. You saw they were grayed out previously. But now when clicking up, uh, by clicking Apply, they become active. And these are active inputs for my audio interface into Studio One. So now I'd like to set up my outputs. So I'll click on the Outputs tab and I'll be presented with a routing matrix very similar to the input routing matrix. On the top row, I have my hardware outputs for my audio interface. And on the left-hand column, I have my software outputs from Studio One as they then chain up to the hardware outputs. Now my main output is automatically created and it is linked up to main out left and right on my audio interface. For most folks that's just fine. That may be all that you need in order to get started. Those little LR icons show me that the left right stereo output that's been created is chained up to main out left and right from Studio One running out to my audio interface to my Studio 192. But I would like to make use of the headphones. I have two headphone outputs on my Studio 192 and you may have uh, separate headphone outputs or other outputs on your audio interface. If that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and click Add Stereo, click it twice. Now I'm going to rename these newly created outputs. I'm going to name this Headphone 1 and name my next one Headphone 2. And now this gives me two headphone outputs and I need to choose where these route to because these are just going to jump to the next available outputs, but I want these connected to my headphones. So I'm going to take my mouse, I'm going to click just under Phones 1 left and right, and this moves those icons and then I'll do the same for Phones 2. So now my headphones are hard-coded to talk to those headphones outputs on my audio interface. I'll click apply and they become active. I can see that because they're no longer grayed out. There's one last important thing to take a look at and that is the QMix. When I click on the checkboxes next to QMix for any of my second, third, and etc. audio outputs that I create in Studio One, I can now send separate audio outputs from uh, software channels inside of Studio One out and to my hardware and this is very useful for, in this case, the headphones, where I could send separate mixes to each of those headphones from my audio outputs and my tracks in Studio One. I could also use this for sending audio to other mixers, other monitors, uh, headphone monitors, mixers, things along those lines. All of this very easy to set up and allow me to get those uh, output controls from Studio One.
So as long as I've set everything up in the way that I like it, I can take a look at everything and review, and then I can go ahead and move down and I can click on OK in order to exit out from this dialog box. But before I do that, I'll go ahead and apply and do one last thing, and that's take a look at the Make Default button. Now, Make Default is useful because when I click on it, Studio One is going to ask me if I would like to make this the default for my future songs that I set up and create inside of Studio One. And this is great because this means that now I won't have to do all of this work again. So if you don't want to have to do this again, and if you're going to pretty much use the same input and output setup for most of your recording passes, mixing, and etc. Uh, in Studio One, you can just go ahead and click Yes here, and that'll make this the default input and output setup in Studio One. Great time saver, and when you do that, you won't have to do any of this setup ever again. And there you have it, everyone. That is how you can set up your audio inputs and outputs and your audio interface with Personas Studio One. I hope you found this useful. And as always, if you have questions or comments, or if you'd like to learn how to use Studio One in real time with a professional digital audio trainer just like myself, give us a call at Obedia PC Audio Labs, and we'll help you tame your technology. That's what we do best here at Obedia PC Audio Labs. As always, guys, I'm Brian. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Today's pro audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your pro audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.